there's no one here yet. And that's because apparently Facebook is having trouble with their live streaming today. And so I am unable to stream on Facebook. So here I am on YouTube only. And I hope that some of you guys will make the leap to YouTube uh, for today's session, which is how to do a time audit in Rome and why you would want to do a time audit at all. Uh, I'm going to give a few minutes just to see if uh, there is anybody out there. And if not, I will most certainly um, record this for folks who would like to watch later. I see we have some live viewers. So while we sit for a few minutes and wait, uh, why don't you tell me where you are viewing from? I am viewing from an extremely cold and rainy Scotland, uh, which is getting me a bit down. So um, I'm looking for some warmer weather. Hopefully there's some people out there experiencing some warmer weather than I am. So, okay, let's see how this goes today. What we are doing today, Stephanie, hi. Uh, I know, is it warmer in London or is it raining in London? Because you are glad you're not in Scotland right now. It's raining here. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to start today's session and we are going to be talking about the time audit. So what is a time audit? Well, um, we're going to talk about the reason why we can do a time audit with time is because time is quantifiable. So um, it's just like money. Uh, except for one difference. And the difference between time and money is, unfortunately, time just goes away and you can't make more of it, which means it is really, really important for you to be intentional about your time. And we have a methodology of being intentional um, by using Rome Research, and we're going to go through that methodology today. So what are we going to do? Well, it's actually a three-step process that we are going to talk through this, uh, this evening. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, what do you want to be spending your time on? We are going to talk about how you can analyze how you are spending it. And we are going to talk about how to create a budget so that you can manage your time as you move forward. So let's first and foremost talk about um, what you are going to spend it on. Now, um, this is kind of um, a, a small segment of what will become my ultimate life planning course in Rome. Currently, I have an ultimate life planning course that I run through workshops and um, on, uh, in person on online. I haven't done it for a while because I've been busy with my PhD, but I am converting that into a Rome format. Um, the first thing we talk about when we talk about our ultimate life planning is we talk about something I call the ultimate whys. And we actually have um, a very um, long methodology for how we actually go about creating those ultimate whys and aligning them with your goals and your projects. This video will not be able to cover that. Um, the only thing we're going to be able to cover is the actual time audit piece. So you'll see me reference the ultimate whys and the goals and the projects a few times. Um, so we're going to actually make that a little bit easier for you and um, just have you set up some goals to work with the time audit uh, so far today. So we're not doing that here, but it will be available in the Ultimate Life Planning course. So the next thing we want to know is how are you spending your time? And this is what we are going to do today. This is a really difficult activity for many people. 
And it's a difficult activity to do for time for the same reason that it's a difficult activity to do for money. Um, when I am working with coaching clients um, and they are getting ready to start their own business, their personal finance is really, really important to straighten out before you get into building a business. And so the first thing we do, what I do is I ask them to do a money audit. And people are extremely resistant to this because when you actually do track every single penny you spend, you find out some things that you may not be too happy about discovering. And the exact same thing happens with a time audit. So when you do a time audit, you will find out some things that you're not too happy that you're spending your time on. Um, you may find out some really um, unfortunate things about uh, what time you are wasting. And when you do the time audit, it kind of pushes you into this position where you really need to uh, make some effort at change. And unless you're willing to address the issues that you're going to uncover in this time audit, I would suggest that you maybe leave this until a later date until you are ready to do so. So the last piece of doing a time audit is we are going to actually create a budget. And I want you to remember that um, when we create your time budget, and the same actually with when I create a money budget with coaching clients, a budget is not a restrictive tool. So many people are res uh, resistant to creating a budget because they feel as though it's something that's going to restrict them from doing what you want. But actually a budget in both time and money is a tool to align what you spend in money and time with what you want out of life. So what your ultimate whys are, what your goals are, what your projects are. So you're just using the budget to align correctly. Um, it's an indicator that you use for correctional purposes. A budget should not rule your life. And if it starts to rule your life, then you've got some problems that um, you, you need to address as well, because that, that's not a good thing. A budget is supposed to be a tool to help you manage um, your time and your money, not something that you are restricted by. A budget can be really, really super empowering. And I think you will see that when we talk through that today. So what are we going to do today? The first thing we're going to do is um, we are going to look at a time audit template. So there are two pieces to the time audit. There's the general time audit page that you are going to keep in Rome Research. That's going to be your page that you always head to when you feel a little bit lost about how you're spending your time. And then there is a uh, daily notes page smart block that you are going to use to actually track your time during the time audit. Both of these will be available as JSON files. Um, you can find out how to get them in the description below the video when they are ready. Um, and um, you don't actually need to do any of this activities, any of these activities in real research itself. In fact, it might be far better suited to um, Excel only because you have the ability to sort and shuffle and things like that. But if you do it in Excel, then you lose the integration with your day and the daily notes page. And you also lose the really valuable block linkages. So although it's a little bit more messy and a little bit more tinkering to do it in Rome Research, it's really valuable because it's something that you can always turn back to uh, when you feel the need to reevaluate where you are spending your time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you right now. And we are going to take a look at an example of the time audit template. OK, so here you see we are we are in my personal room. Um, so I have created an example of the time audit template and the time audit template consists of three main sections. Um, although some of the sections might repeat if you decide to do the time audit, um, multiple times. So the first section of your time audit is actually for you to put your goals down. And there are several methods that you can choose to do this. So you'll see I've listed goal one, two, three, four, and five. You can actually just choose to um, link your goal number one, goal one as a page, 
and then put your uh, title next to the goal and just use the goal number one when you are uh, referring to that goal. It just makes it easier than having to use a really long page title. Or if you prefer, you can use the long page title as you see I have done here. So um, what I've also done is I've kind of made up some um, goals and, and projects and such just to show you that your goal when you are actually working in your time audit doesn't need to be restricted, restricted to a goal if you're going to be using the um, hierarchical structure that I use to organize my ultimate life planning. So you'll see I actually have a goal here, which is I am a Rome Research Master. I have an ultimate why, which is friends, family, and home. It's one of the reasons why I do everything that I do. Um, I just have some uh, regular goals that you, you could list if you don't have time to start thinking through the bigger picture. Um, and then I also have a project listed here too. So in order to get through the time audit, just think about what your key three to five goals are um, for the next six months to a year. You can get more complex as you get better at the time audit and as you learn more, if you would learn more from, from the course. And then what we have here is we actually have the tracking template. This is going to be your totals. Um, you're going to put every goal um, in here as a bullet. And then underneath, I have a sub bullet, which actually calculates how much time per day you are going to be spending um, on this particular activity. So we're going to track everything in minutes and you are going to do it, do this activity every single day for a week. And I'm going to show you how it gets done. Um, but this is the page that you're going to come back to and I'll show you how we track that as well. Um, and then what you have is what you want your target week to be. And that is basically your budget. And that will come out of the steps that you take um, in order to continue the time audit. So, um, Stephanie's asking if I'm sharing my screen and I'm not sharing my screen. I thought I was getting so good at this too. Okay, uh, so here is what I was just sharing. Uh, I apologize for that. Here are your goals uh, that I have was just talking about. Here is what the week looks like. Uh, you would put the week date there and then list your goals. And here is what the calculation will look like. And we're going to go over how you use that. And here is your target week, week, which is actually your budget. So apologies for not sharing there. I thought I was getting better at this, but apparently I'm not. So <laughs> let's actually go back here. Um, we are going to now uh, take a look at the, um, we are going to take a look at the daily tracking. So the next thing that we're going to do is daily tracking. And just like the time audit template, I am going to be providing you with um, a JSON file. It will be in the description when it's ready. Um, hi, Badger. Uh, of the um, of, uh, of what the template looks like. It comes with the smart block. So the reason we have to do daily tracking of our time is that it's just like when you do um, daily tracking for your money. We want to account for every single minute you spend just for a week. So I don't want you to get obsessive about this thinking, that you're going to this is a one-time activity that you do for one week to try and align the time you spend with the goals that you have. So um, we have to track it minute by minute. And it, it, the reason we do this is because trying to remember and, and do it afterwards is like trying to remember what you bought with the money that you took out of the ATM. Um, nobody ever does, right? So we're going to track everything in 15 minute increments. And this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to share my screen with you again. And I did it right this time. And I'm going to show you the example um, that I created of what it would look like. <clears throat> okay, 
So here you have your time audit daily notes page example. So what you would do is you would go to the bottom of your daily notes page at, at, at every day that you are doing the time audit and you would run the smart block for the, um, the daily notes page. So I would just say DJJ to find the smart block and then time audit. And again, I've provided this smart, will provide this smart block to you with no problem. Um, and then that will run for you all of these um, hours for you to track against. Now I'm only giving you the main hours, although I want you to track every 15 minutes because um, I want you to use these as sort of stepping stones um, and, and indicators for that particular hour. So as you can see in the time, I'm just gonna go back to the time audit um, example here. As you can see, because we're going to use this, as you can see in the time audit daily notes page example, I have actually pretended that I've started tracking. So you seriously are going to do this. And it sounds crazy, but it's going to be so valuable to you. And you'll see why when we do the analysis. You are going to start your day. And as you start your day, you are going to put the start and end time of everything that you do. And you're going to try and do it in 15 minute increments meaning that don't skip 15 minutes of empty time. If you skip five minutes or 10 minutes of empty time, that's fine. You've gone to the bathroom, you've gone to get a drink of water, et cetera. But a 15 anything more than a 15 minute period should be tracked. So you'll see what I've done here. I've actually said, okay, it's seven o'clock and under seven o'clock I have nested. I started, this is made up, but it's a uh, data that we can use. I've started my morning pages, I've at seven, I ended my morning pages at 7.20. I started an email review at 7.25. I ended that at 7.50. I started a Facebook um, session at 7.55. I ended that at 8.20, et cetera. And I want you to do that for the entire day. Now, if you are including your personal goals in the goals that you are setting up for the time audit, then I would track the entire day from the moment you wake up until the moment that you go to sleep. If you are using the time audit specifically to serve your professional or your academic life, then I would track the times that you are actually supposed to be working. So I know that most PhDs will try and have a nine to five day. Um, if you are working from home or you are working for yourself, then this could also be valuable to you um, as well, tracking from a nine to five period. So here you are, you have completed your day. Um, you've done it in your daily notes page. So now what? Now what happens? Well, what happens now is we go to the next step of the time audit. So we've actually now completed the tracking process. Um, we've, decided, we've decided what we wanna spend it on because we've set up our goals. We've completed our tracking process. We've actually documented how we are really, really um, using our time. And the next thing that we need to do is our daily analysis. So what happens in our daily analysis? Back to sharing my screen. What you're going to do is in your daily analysis, you are going to actually look at the start and end time of everything. And you are going to decide what goal that particular activity was serving. So when I do my morning pages, I'm really serving a personal goal of feeding my creative soul. That is one of my ultimate whys. It's actually not on my goals list, but I don't care about that because right now I'm just tracking everything that I, that I do. Here's my ultimate why, feed my creative soul. And then I wanna put the total amount of minutes. So that's 20 minutes. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to look at email stuff and end, and I'm going to think, what is email? What am I doing my email for? Um, and then you need to think about, does it relate to a specific project? So let's say all of my email related to my PhD work, then I could actually just choose the goal, um, get my PhD, um, which is goal three. Um, excuse me. And I haven't, I haven't actually um, made that into a page for that goal because it's my personal database. So I didn't want to add pages in that I didn't need. So I'm just gonna type that in, but you would actually link directly to that page. <clears throat> and then I would put here that I work for uh, 25 minutes. Now, what happens if you're taking a look at something that you did and you don't really know what goal um, it actually goes against? The question you need to ask yourself is, is this a time waster? There's three questions. The first question is, is this a time waster? And if it is, you just need to mark it time waster because this that's really important. Oh, sorry, I need to put that under that right. It's really important for you to track. So you've got there uh, 25 minutes of time waster. The second question you need to ask is, hey, maybe this isn't a time waster. I mean, maybe to everyone else, it seems like a time waster, but maybe on Facebook, I am actually keeping track of my family and my friends. And it's a very important activity to you. And this is the thing, it's very, very personal. If it's an important activity to you, then it's something that gets budgeted. It's just like when you have a money budget and some people will say, okay, well, going out to restaurants is a waste of your money. You shouldn't do that. But the, if going out to restaurants is really important to you, then that's what you choose to use your money on and that's what you budget for. And that's why a budget is so freeing, right? So let's say that I actually do use Facebook to keep in touch with my family and friends. I'm going to put that one um, in, I'm going to put family and friends in here um, as a tracking. That, so the first question you ask is, is it a time waster? If it's not a time waster, um, you have to ask the question, is this something that I haven't included in my goals that I really, really do need to include? And then if it is, then create a new goal right here on this page. And we'll have to add that in when we do the analysis. So. Um, is this a time waster? Should I be doing this? And if not, um, what goal does it go against? You also might actually find that you're spending a lot of time on something that isn't a goal. So for example, I have on here a phone call with Mary. Um, and I'm going to say that um, from 1045 for 35 minutes, I was on the phone with Mary. And I was on the phone with Mary because she was asking me uh, to help her with her business, right? So actually what I was doing for this 35 minutes is I was business coaching, okay? And we'll leave this just now because in the analysis, this becomes really important. If you can't think of a goal that you want to put it against and you can't think of it as a time waster because it was actually something that was you know, productive, then just put in the title of what it is that you're doing and we're gonna analyze it in our next step. So let's say you've done that, you've gone through and you've actually put in all your minutes. Well, the next step that you're going to go to in this um, time audit process is you are going to um, do your weekly review. So what happens in the weekly review. The first question you uh, need to, the first thing you need to do is um, at the end of every week, uh, at the end of every day, actually, you could probably do this, is put your actual time spent against um, the, um, uh, into the calculation underneath that goal. So I'm not gonna actually match it up to these goals because it's too confusing, but let's say that I had goal one and during that week, um, I spent 25 minutes on Monday, uh, 15 minutes on Tuesday, 65 minutes on Wednesday, 45 minutes on Thursday, and 30 minutes on Friday. Dividing it by 60, I'm going to get hours and I'll see that I actually spent uh, three hours on that particular goal. So you want to do that for um, at the end of the week. 
for every single goal that you have written here. If it is a goal that you didn't mark as one of your goals, just add it to the bottom because we definitely need to get that tracked. Okay, so now you are at the end of your week. You have all of the time you have spent on every single one of these goals. So what are you going to do in your weekly analysis? Well, the first thing you want to do in your weekly analysis is you want to figure out exactly where did you spend your time. So against each one of these goals in the actual week, I want you to make a little bit, a little note about um, the time that you spent and how important it was to you. This is a note to yourself. So you don't have to worry about this being perfect. Let's say goal one is I am a real Rome research master, as you can see in my goal section here. Um, and I spent three hours on it. I'm going to say, if I really want to be a Rome research master, <clears throat> um, I can't type when people are working. I need to spend more time on this, right? Just a note to myself. And then let's say on the bottom, I have added this business coaching because I found, found out that I'm answering a lot of emails and I'm spending a lot of time on the phone with people. Um, and I actually have a calculation for that. Let's just say it was 10 hours. I'm going to make a note to myself and I'm going to say, I don't know how I, how I started doing this, um, got myself into this. Uh, this is not where I want to be spending my time. Okay. So you're just noting to yourself. Uh, how you feel about the amount of time that you have spent on everything. That is your first step in your weekly review. And then what you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself the very specific question, how did the time that I spent on each one of these goals align with my goals? So often when you do a time review, you'll see what, what will happen is that you have very little time spent on the goals that you actually established for yourself. And then you're going to have a long list of activities below here that you never, ever thought were goals. But all of a sudden, uh, you have a huge, long list of them. So what you are looking for is you are looking for um, three things. You are looking for huge gaps. OK, so if I know that I want to uh, get my Ph.D. by 2022 and I look at goal three and I have spent two hours on that activity, I know that I need to shift my budget. Right. So look for gaping holes where you are not spending time against the goals you have established. The next thing you're going to want to do is ask yourself, did I discover a new why? a new goal, a new project. So let's say, for example, I had an absolutely fabulous time talking with Mary. And maybe I'd never actually coached anyone before, but Mary said, oh, that was really fabulous. I enjoyed it. She enjoyed it. She said to me, hey, you know what? Let's do this again and maybe I'll pay you for it next time. All of a sudden, you've discovered a new goal that you didn't have before. You need to be really flexible when you do the time audit because you're going to uncover a lot of things and you need to do a lot of thinking about why was I spending time on this? Okay. The other thing that you might discover is that you have a lot of um, what I call deceiving whys, which is you think that um, it, your why is to complete let's say, complete three short stories by uh, June 1st. You think that that is important to you, and that's why you put it on there. But if you get to the end of the week and you have spent zero time on one of your goals, you need to ask yourself, is this really my goal or am I doing it for somebody else? Or am I doing it because I feel like I should be doing it? Or am I doing it because it just seems like the next thing on my list? So you're looking for what I call deceiving wise. Like, so this is really not something, obviously not something that it's important to me because for this entire week, I have spent zero time on it. Um, and then the next thing you need to do is you need to ask yourself, what is your plan to address the time suckers? So over here, you see that yeah, you've got your um, time wasters. Um, let's say that Facebook actually is a time waster and you've added up all your time wasters and you found out 
that you are spending like 15 hours a week on social media. Let's say that we're just gonna pop that in here. That's something that came up in your analysis. Um, then what you need to do is you need, to, this is part of your weekly review, is within this section where I asked you to note something, is you need to come up with a plan. And that is a plan for how are you going to address this particular issue. So perhaps you install um, a, an app blocker like Freedom, or perhaps you uh, install a um, actual timing mechanism on your computer, like timing, which will tell you how much time you spend in, in every application and kind of make you think about it. Um, and maybe you need to just uh, take your phone out of your office, et cetera, et cetera. So come up with a plan for those things that you do not want to have in your budget. The other thing about your daily planning, this daily notes page that we're working with here, is that what this forces you to do um, as you are working on it every day is it forces you to actually think about what you are going to do next so you become more intentional with your time and it also um, is sort of the beginning of interstitial journaling which is super super helpful um, in, the in terms of context switching we're not going to go through that now but it's kind of like a launch pad into that kind of planning so um, that is what you would do in your weekly analysis. And the next thing you would do is some realignment and budgeting. So now you have all of the data you need about how you have actually spent every single minute of your time during the week, how it aligns with your goals, and you've asked yourself some really difficult questions. So the next thing you need to do is create your target week, which is your budget. And this is where your goals may shift from these goals. And that's okay, because you may have made some pretty cool discoveries in your time audit. But list your goals and actually put your target for the following week so that you know what you are working towards. And then I would put your time budget at the top of every single daily notes page or within your weekly planning. So that when you are doing your weekly planning, you make sure that you are addressing each one of these subjects um, when you start to plan. So um, then what you can do is you can schedule a review. So anytime you feel like you are off balance, you can go back to the time review uh, the time audit, and you can do another one to see how you're actually doing against your time budget. Um, and again, the time budget is not restrictive. It's very, very flexible. So if you see that you are not spending enough time on something, it's not, um, it's not, that doesn't mean that it's the time for you to start getting really, really down on yourself and really, really strict with yourself. It just means that it's the time for you to start asking questions. Is this really what I want to be doing? Why am I resistant to this? If I am resistant to this and it is really what I want to be doing, what can I do to get past that? So the time audit is not really just an accounting of your time. It is also a tool for you to really think about what it is you want to achieve with your time and how you can start to just move yourself more to being really intentionally aware of how you spend that really, really precious commodity. Because as I said in the beginning um, of this, every single minute when it's gone, it's gone, which is very unlike money. When money is gone, you can make more. When time is gone, it's gone. So time is more important to budget than money is in, in my mind. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Um, I want to just wait a few minutes to open it up to any questions. So if you have any questions, you can just go ahead and put them um, in the chat. We don't have very many folks watching today. Unfortunately, most people watch on Facebook and the Facebook stream um, is not working today. Facebook is having technical issues. So this will probably be a replay and I can actually post it onto Facebook for those guys that are missing it. Apart from that, this was a super fast run through of what a time audit is, 
what it looks like and what the purpose is for um, using it. Sorry, I, went, I just put the wrong one on. <clears throat> No questions? This was Rome for Results Live. You can join us every Friday at noon, noon Eastern time for a new Rome related video. And you can ask questions and interact with us on this live video. Thanks very much for joining us today. See you next week. Onwards and upwards.